everyone and welcome to the Lay Studios. I am Pranita. Today I am going to be painting this wooden birdhouse that has a swallow and some branches and some flowers on it with watercolors. I am going to be doing this quite slowly and I'm going to go over my process of how I layer colors and I'm going to glaze the last layer especially on the uh, the birdhouse um i'm using two reference pictures but i'm using them more so for my color palette than anything else so um i've got my brushes <clears throat> my brushes out here and my color palettes i'm using a couple different ones i'm using the winsor newton tubes uh, and the half pans i find the half pans have uh, more intense pigment uh, than the tubes, but for washes, the tubes are really, really great. So I'm gonna be going back and forth with those. I've got my water containers ready, my Zabe squirrel hair brushes that I am absolutely in love with. I love the way these paint and work with the water and the pigment. And I've got my tissues ready and let's begin. So I'm gonna start with this part of the birdhouse. I'm gonna try and do these panels one at a time. So I'll probably start with this one first, skip this one, then do this one. So this one has some time to dry. Then when I do do this middle one, whatever overlap happens, there'll be a little bit of a glaze and it'll intensify this edge without me having to go in with more pigment. So let's get that started. I'm going to be using a lot of the browns that I have. There's burnt umber and then okra, um, some burnt oranges. And for the glazes, I'm going to be using an emerald green and this blue over here. I have some black dished out as well, just in case I want to put some thin, um, intense lines in the shadows, especially in these cracks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lighten all of my pencil lines and I'm gonna use a needable eraser for this. Uh, the reason why I'm using a needle eraser and not a regular eraser is that the regular erasers create a lot of um, eraser dust and it takes off too much of the graphite, uh, whereas the needable eraser doesn't leave a lot of um, eraser dust and it's very gentle when it takes off the, the, the pigment so I'm going to go over the whole image and take off quite a bit of this graphite all right still want to be able to see the image so I know what I'm doing but that looks good it shouldn't interfere with the watercolors too much. Okay, so I'll put that aside. And now I'm gonna keep the larger brush for my water and the smaller one for the pigment. So I'm gonna start by just washing these brushes out because I, when I leave them to dry, I leave them to condition in the artist soap. So I've gotta get that soap residue off. And I'm going to start with this panel over here and I'm just going to lay down some water. I don't want it sopping wet, but I want it wet enough so that the colors blend into each other. Just a little bit more. I'm just going to do just this panel. I'm not putting water in this little shadow bit because that's going to be a little bit more intense so i want that to be a wet on dry so wet brush with um, dry paper a little bit more pigmented where the wood's cracked a little Don't worry about seeing the pencil lines now because this is just the first initial layer of the wash. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to this panel. Again, same technique. I'm going to wet the paper first. I'm going to avoid this shadow area. 
and I'm only gonna do this panel. I'm not gonna do the sides yet because those I want them to glaze over where they meet. yet so I'm gonna start working on this panel over here I'm going to leave the sparrow and the branch to the end because um, I want the sparrow to be really really washy so I'm gonna be using my mop brushes to paint that uh, so mop brushes and probably this brush and maybe one of the smaller ones for the detail work um, but I want to leave that to the end because I want the paint quality to be different from the birdhouse itself again so that there's a contrast not only in color and subject matter but also in painting technique and line and brush strokes so let's start with this panel over here now this is on this side of the birdhouse so i want that to be a little bit darker and it's going to be a little bit darker where the roof overlaps and then as it goes down it's going to get lighter uh, but i'm still going to work each panel separately so that i can have this distinction now since that's really close to that and that's not dry yet. I think I can still manage it. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with this panel. I'm going to be using more of the burnt umbers with, with this side. So I'm just going to take some of that burnt umber. Just add a little bit to the edge and let it bleed. Bleed in a little bit more pigment near the top. Let that blend down. So I'm going to lift some of this color before it has time to settle into the paper. So I'm just washing my brush and drying it off and picking up the pigment. There we go. That's a little better. And can I just add a touch of the okra? Okra? So that it ties in together with the with the roof. All right, and now I'm gonna move on to the next panel. I'm gonna skip that one and do this one next. want these panels to be darker than the face of the birdhouse so it's one two three and this fourth panel is also on this side one of the reasons why i love using watercolors is that the pigment is so forgiving and it's so easily moved around as opposed to acrylics because um, acrylics are so thick and they're plastic based the 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 binder is plastic based so once it's down it's kind of a little difficult to move around too much when it comes to like how intense and it's really really opaque so I find watercolors are a lot more forgiving in that way and they're a lot more versatile so you can get the different um, textures that you like or like if you want something more realistic you can achieve that if you want something more abstract and washy you can achieve that too all right let's leave that one i'm just gonna check this roof that's a dryer but it needs a little blast all right so let's do this middle panel here Again, same, just gonna wet the whole panel, trying to avoid that cut in the wood. It's gonna be a slightly different shade of brown. This will be a dark color, so that's okay. I can paint on top of that when we start to do the details. 
I'm going to try and make sure that I go over the edge of the panels that are adjacent just a hair so that the pigment travels into those areas and you get this layered effect. Starting with the ochre. side panels here. Let this down. Start with the ochre this time, just again to add a little variety. But the predominant color for this one is going to be the burnt umber. So when you do overlap, don't agitate too much because then you're going to lift up the pigments that are on the bottom and then you'll blend a little too much. So right where these join, especially on this, this side of the birdhouse, I want these to be a little bit more intense. So I lay the pigment down and then wash my brush off and then with only a little bit of water on my brush, I soften these edges just a little to give it a little bit more of a natural look. All right, I'm happy with that, but I want some lighter area, so I'm gonna take my tissue, and just pick up some of that pigment and then soften these areas a little. Wash my brush out so there's very little pigment on there. And I think I want to agitate some areas on these panels as well and pick up some of the pigment. Oops, up there, up there. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna work on these front panels. And these front panels are gonna be these same tones, but they're gonna be a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go even washier with them and then slowly build them up. And I'm gonna use the glaze to actually make them look more intense. So I'm just gonna blast this with a hairdryer. All right, so I'm gonna start with this panel. Again, everything's gonna be darker up top because it'll be in the shadow of the roof and then it gets lighter as, as it goes down. So it's gonna be less and less pigment as we get down to the bottom. Okay, moving on to the next one. Now this, this one cracks into two, but I'm gonna paint them, paint it as one, so gonna wet both sections and work with the same that work them at the same time just so that there's continuity now using these short strokes starts to add a little texture as well to the paint even though this is still technically like the first wash it's still uh, an underpainting um, adding these little brush strokes intensifies the, the texture and you'll be able to see it in the next layer gash in it, a big break in that wood. I'm gonna avoid that. You can't really see too much of this panel. The sparrow's in the way and then there's the perch and then this flower in the branch. 
again, I'm skipping this one and doing this last panel over here. Just using my pigment brush to lay the water down because this area is a little smaller. I'm going to use a lot of um, red tones in it so it's going to still work with these browns but it'll still stand out. Alright, I'm going to blast this with the hair dryer and start on those other panels. I'm going to mix in a little bit more of the ochre with the burnt umber in these alternate panels just so that there's again a little bit of variation in tones. And when I do the glazing on top of this, I'm only going to do the glazing in a couple of different spots and it's going to add a really uh, patinaed look. It's a really worn out look to the wood. And I'm going to be using uh, the emerald green, the blues, and probably a little bit of the purples as well, just to add a different tone. All right, now this panel again is in two sections. As you can see, I'm starting to go over these edges a little bit and go over to the other panels just where they overlap so that you get a second layer and then it just gets a little bit more intense. I'm going to put more pigment anywhere there's going to be a shadow. And then when you glaze that area you don't have to add quite as much pigment. You can use masking fluid as well to mask off areas and so one option would be to mask off the, the branch here especially where it overlaps and therefore you'll be able to get a really nice clean edge but it's not completely necessary. the roof and I'm going to start intensifying these pigments a little bit more. I'm going to be using less water and I'm going to be working more dry, uh, wet on dry. So the paper is going to be dry and the brush is going to be wet. So I'm going to use my number four brush, pick up this burnt umber and a little bit of this orange. And I'm gonna go over these edges just a little. So I'm gonna lay the pigment down and almost outline it so I get the shape of this particular panel. A little bit more there. A little bit of the color here and there. And at the edge, the top and the bottom. And then using clean brush, just blend out these edges. I'm going to try and blend out most of these edges, but not all of them again so that there's variation in tones and it will also give me an idea of where I want to put the knots, the knots of the wood. up too much of that pigment but that paper over there is a little too wet right now to add more pigment if I add any more it's just gonna blend so I'm gonna just let that dry for a second 
and work on this panel. Let's give that line one more go over. Just mixing the orange with the burnt umber. Just adding a thin line of pigment where those two panels meet. And then blending out that edge. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on these bottom areas where there's more shadow. So I'm gonna keep the paper dry and quite a wet brush with just a little bit of pigment. I'm gonna start glazing this under area so that it looks like there's a shadow and I'm just gonna go across all of these panels and then blend out the hard edge. I'm just going to drop some of that pigment there and just leave it. Since the paper is wet, it's going to start blending down anyway, so I'm just going to let it naturally do what it wants to do. And because we did that bottom layer with the line, it's still going to peek through. So you'll still be able to see the distinction between, between the panels. And I'm gonna do the same thing all the way under this roof, except for this spot where there's a hole in the roof. So you're not gonna get that shadow. Quite a bit of water, just a little pigment. And I'm gonna start at the top here. Okay, and where you see that it's like blended out a little too much, just add, just drop the pigment on the top there and let it flow. And this is where you can start to add a little bit more distinction between the panels and where they meet. So adding a little bit more pigment where the two panels join. We'll add that dimension. Now I do want to add a little bit of dark tones to this panel. It shouldn't stick out like a sore thumb, so I'm going to add a little bit of a darker tone. So even though these two panels, this part of these two panels are in the shadow, you still want to make sure that there's a little bit of distinction between the two so you know it's two separate ones and what i'll do is i'll go in between with a really dark uh, brown or i'll probably mix the brown with an indigo and so you get a really dark color that's not black but close to and then that'll make the distinction between those panels I'm liking the way that's looking so far. I am going to start adding the knots in these panels. So I'm gonna give this a good dry. And for the knots, I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna use the number two round brush. And I'm gonna make this brown burnt umber a little bit more intense. So now I'm just gonna start doing the detail work. I'm mixing a little bit of the indigo, just so that it gives, it gives this brown a little bit more of a green hue. Don't need too much of it, so I'm not gonna mix up too much of it. And I'm gonna start with these side panels. I'm gonna place my knots first, kind of randomly, and then kind of draw some lines to join them together. And these are gonna be some cracks. So I'm gonna go in with the indigo darken that up quite a lot so that it 
stands out. And as I reach the end, I'm just going to lift my brush so I can get a really fine line down to the bottom. I'm still going to go over these transitions where the two panels meet because those lines have to get darker as well, but I'm going to use a striper brush for that. So it's got these really long, stiff bristles and you can pull a really strong, um, smooth line with them. Again, not every panel needs to have these, but the larger ones definitely do. And I'm also going to start adding the details, the edge here. So I'm going to start adding these shadows of where the cracks are using the same color. So this is going to be a slightly lighter color than this. So I want to make sure that I darken this first before I put any pigment on this area so that it looks like the broken side of the wood. So you can actually see the inside of the wood, so it's going to be a different shade of brown, but as it gets to the top here, you're going to get this darker line. I'm just going to put that in. So this is dry paper. I haven't wet the paper yet. Again, these panels that you can decide the wood over here is going to be a slightly different shade, so I'm not painting that in yet. spray bottle to wet these paints so that I don't have to keep dipping into my water jug. Okay, so now this area is going to be very, very dark. So more indigo, less of the burnt umber. So this is going to be the inside of the birdhouse. There's a hole in the roof. I try to avoid using straight black when I can. I just find that straight black kind of sucks up too much light and uh, doesn't add any subtlety. So I like to mix my own blacks, if you will. There we go. Where the perch meets the panel, I'm going to intensify the pigment around that. So I'm going to mix a little bit of that indigo, burnt umber, and the ochre. And just lay the pigment down. It needs a little bit more. I'm going to use more of the okra, but I'm going to go in wet brush, dry paper. And I don't mind these edges being a little rough. I mean, it is wood and it is rotting wood. It's going to have a jagged edge. Just where all of these edges meet and where it changes direction, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this indigo just so the panels look even more distinct from each other. I'm just doing that at the base, I'm not doing it all the way up. glaze this yet so I'm still gonna add more tones to it okay let's start adding these details on the side panels now starting at the bottom 
Now these I'm gonna actually go all the way up because I want this side to be darker and more intense. I'm gonna add a little bit more of a shadow to get this indigo up top here and pull down where these panels meet. same thing along this edge here. Now this part, there's going to be a lot more of these darker lines because this part of the wood is really broken. Side of this hole is going to be a very very dark so it's going to be a lot of the indigo and very little of the burnt umber okay now i'm going to add a, my first glaze but it's going to be a shadow glaze for this underside over here it's far too bright um, for being in a shadow so I'm going to take quite a bit of the burnt umber and some of the indigo and I'm going to water it down quite a bit so even though it's quite dark it'll still lay just a little bit of pigment down and making sure that it's quite my brush is quite wet I'm just going to drop some of that on there probably cover that whole area and then i'm gonna start lifting some of it up so by lifting some of that pigment it's taken off some of that bright orangey tinge that it had before I start painting the sparrow. I should probably paint in the brown for the perch as well. So let's do that first. Now I'm gonna do this wet on wet. I'm gonna use a little bit more of the orange and the burnt umber for this. Once it dries, I'll outline it. So first, I want to make sure I mix up quite a bit of this indigo with the burnt umber. Look at this really deep, intense color. And then very carefully, I'm just going to outline this whole thing and fill it in. All of the other colors that we laid down before coming through and this just adds a slightly different tone <laughs> 
with this to the roof as well. So lots of water, a little bit of the emerald green. of that color at that that is fine okay now there's a stalk over here that's holding the whole thing up and that's the same wood in the same brown as this so I'm gonna do that panel next and then I'm gonna work on the branches and the flowers and then I'm gonna leave the sparrow to last because that's going to be very, very washy and I want to use the mop brushes for that. Now this edge had bled, bled a little too much, so I'm going to use one of the synthetic brushes once I've given this a dry. tissue clean water synthetic brushes are a lot stiffer so if you're trying to take pigment off the paper it works a lot better so just agitate where you want it to go and then blot it natural hair brushes don't have the stiffness and they bend so you won't be able to do this so using a synthetic brush it's much 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 easier Okay, so I'm going to leave that block at that. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the branch and the flowers. And for that color palette, I'm going to go with the emerald green and, and orange, just so that there's a nice contrast between the birdhouse and the, the branch. So I'm going to use the same wet on wet technique. So I'm gonna wet the paper first and I'm gonna work in sections. I'm gonna leave the flowers till the end. And then my pigment brush, add a little bit of this emerald. And then I'm gonna use this orange to tone it down. So that orange mixing in with the with the emerald green gives it a brown tinge, but still it just keeps everything really warm. The warm tones. I might add a little bit of sap green just to intensify a little bit of a natural color, kind of. I'm gonna work on the branches, all of the branches first, and then I'll work on the flowers. With these pans, I like to take the color off and put it on the palette just so that I can make sure how intense it is because the pigments from this from the palettes just are so much more intense. These flowers, I'm going to paint them extremely delicately, so they're going to start with almost like a, a peach on the inside and then the tips of the petals are gonna be a little bit more on the red side. Okay, so one more time. Put a lot of that pigment in the center and then using a clean brush the whole flower so in one move you're kind of glazing 
that outer edge. And then now I'm just dropping in the color in the center to intensify it a little bit. And then move on to the next. So with the birdhouse itself, I was being quite specific and very rigid with where I was placing my brush. And now I'm starting to get a little bit more loose because the I want the sparrow to be really, really loose. So it's, I'm kind of just trying to um, get my muscle memory back for being loose with my paint and my strokes. let the rest of this dry and I'm going to start on this sparrow so I've got my reference picture I'll post um, I'll make the reference pictures pop up in the video so I'm gonna use I'm gonna switch my water containers here this one has clean water in it now I've got a dagger brush a small mop brush and a fine detailing brush so I'm gonna start with this mop brush and I'm going to start with the body and the head I'm going to try and avoid the eye and the beak for now because uh, the beak's a different color and the rest of the bird is kind of they're very similar colors so try and avoid that the eye is completely just a flat black so i'm just gonna paint over it and once it's dry i'll put the black on top and i'm gonna fill this little panel in after i'm done so now that that's all wet i'm gonna use the okra a little bit of this yellow and a little bit of the burnt umber and i'm just gonna Plop the face. Remember, I'm still using the, the mop brush for this, so I'm letting all the colors bleed and blend in. Then, once this is dry. I'll go in with my detailing brush and really define the feathers. For now, I just want splotches of color. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my detailing brush, the number two, and I have a zero here as well, so I'm gonna keep that close by. And now I'm going to go in with the indigo and the burnt umber and I'm going to start painting in the feathers. Okay, and I'm, now I'm going to glaze some of these areas with the same dark paint that I've been using but now I just want to glaze these areas so I'm just gonna put the pigment down and then take most of it off lots of water I'm still using the detailing brush because I want these areas these areas are quite small so with glazing like this you can slowly build up pigment so that it doesn't get away from you. Like the longer you let it dry, the more of the pigment will settle. So it becomes a little more difficult to agitate once it's dry. around it so I'm gonna put that white in at the very very last because I find watercolor white is very tricky to deal with <laughs> 
gotta wait until the paper's completely dry, go in with clean water, go in with a fresh, clean, clean brush, and then that's the only way you're gonna get an intense white. this pigment so that that line's a little bit thinner, comes to a finer point, and then I'm gonna add a touch of this glaze bottom here to darken that lower beak. So you can see here how the painting techniques are very different and you get a completely different feel um, from the paint. And it's just a matter of um, a glazing technique and using more water in some areas and less in others. This is almost a dry brush technique. It's a uh, as I blot, the paper gets drier and I've got less and less water on my brush. So you can actually see the strokes and it becomes a dry brush. Just fine to get these variations, so that's good. Redefine this tail a little bit. There's one really dark area, so I'm gonna add a little bit more indigo. Just at the bottom there. And then go in with the indigo in just a few spots. It can be really difficult to keep your detailing brushes really at a fine point. So after you use your brushes and you're putting them away, make sure you clean them properly use an artist soap um, and these particular brushes I dry them um, hanging upside down so that the water um, doesn't collect where the glue um, binds the br bristles to the brush. They just add to the longevity of the brushes. just gonna detail the eye around the eye a little bit and maybe some of the feathers but not a lot okay so I'm gonna put one highlight in the eye first you might not be able to see the white but that's fine it just adds a little subtle dimension and you can see the brush strokes better with the white so I'm just gonna add some more down here highlight out of that eye a little bit again because I took some of it off and that I'm gonna leave that there and give it a quick blast with the hair dryer now the inside of the the birdhouse you can see this line that I have over here I don't want that line so I'm gonna take my number four brush, going with some straight indigo, a little bit of that burnt umber. I'm just gonna put another layer of this really dark color in there. I also find that these pan brushes, if you, uh, pan paint, sorry, 
if you wet them and you leave them for a while they almost go um, like a jello um, the water gets absorbed into them and they kind of soak through so you get you pick up a lot more pigment as well so if you don't want that to happen make sure they're dry before you start painting with them or just like leave the the case that you have them in open so that they can air dry because otherwise all of a sudden it just gets away from you because it's so intense notice that I've missed one leaf over here now for balance I think it's important to actually put this leaf in because it continues that green down this way so I'm just gonna pick up the sap green they're big leaves so it should be quick sap green all right and I think I am done Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you have, please comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We launch a video every Monday. And thank you very much for joining me. Have a great day. Goodbye.